Last lecture we uh, discussed the analysis of buck converter, we saw the different equivalent circuits and we also saw some of the waveforms. How do you choose the values of inductors and capacitors? The waveforms we saw that that it is dependent on the value of L and C. But how do you choose the value of L and C? That is what we are going to see in this lecture. So, to do that first let us uh, see this inductor current I L. Now, here at this point if we apply KCL then what you can write it is that I L is equal to I C plus I 0 the load current. Now, we have uh, said before that the average current through the capacitor is going to be equal to 0. So, that means if we take the average over one switching time period for this entire equation So, what we will be getting from this is that capital I L the average of inductor current will be equal to I 0 because the average current through the capacitor is equal to 0. Now, using it if we have to draw the capacitor current waveform. So, what we see here this is the inductor current waveform and then we subtract the average inductor current. This is the average inductor current I L which is same as equal to I 0 the load current. This is I O which is equal to I L. So, then when we subtract this what we will be getting is this capacitor current I C. Now, we can see that that here the average is equal to 0 the current uh, through this capacitor and then here in this part the capacitor current is negative and here the capacitor current is, is positive. So, while the capacitor current is positive what will happen the voltage across the capacitor will increase and then when the capacitor current becomes negative here the voltage through the capacitor will decrease that means the capacitor will discharge at that time. So, that is what leads to a smaller ripple in the capacitor voltage and that is what which is denoted by this delta V c the ripple across the capacitor voltage. And if we take the average of it then that average is given by this V o which is the output voltage V o and uh, which is what we had assumed as to be constant initially, but this is not really a constant this is equal to this uh, voltage V o which is average of this ripple voltage. So, now let us uh, write some equations for these capacitor voltage. So, delta V c is equal to delta q by c where delta q is the change in the charge to the capacitor and you can write it as this is equal to half of uh, delta I L by 2 into T S by 2 into 1 by C. Now, from where are we getting it? You can see here that that if you integrate this area may that means basically find out the area when the capacitor current is positive that is what is going to be equal to this delta Q. So, that will be equal to half of delta I L by 2 because uh, this is going to be this part is going to be equal to delta I L by 2. So, that is what is written and 
this is equal to T s by 2 this time interval. So, that is why it can be written as half of delta I l by 2 into T s by 2 and this 1 by c continues here. So, before what we have derived delta I l equal to V o 1 minus d T s by l. So, therefore, substituting it delta V c can be written as equal to T s square V o 1 minus d into 8 L c. And uh, T s square can be written in terms of switching frequency also. So, what we can write it as delta V c by V o this is equal to 1 minus d 8 L c F s square. So, using this we can obtain C. This is the expression which can be used for obtaining the value of capacitance. So, using the voltage across the ripple how much is the ripple that is allowed for uh, the capacitor when uh, we can specify a limit on it and using it we can find out the capacitance value. Now, next let us see how do we obtain L. Now, to obtain L we have to understand something else which is called as the boundary condition. Now, we saw this inductor current waveform it was like this. So, this is continuous this is not becoming 0 at any time and that is called as the current is in CCM continuous conduction mode. Now, it may so happen that there may be situation where it may start exactly from 0 this inductor current and come back to z exact 0 when the switch is turned off. So, this is the total T s period, this is the on time and this is the off time. So, it may exactly start from 0 come back to 0 and it is also possible that that it may start from 0, but it becomes a 0 before the switch is turned on again. So, this current then becomes discontinuous the inductor current. So, this is called as discontinuous conduction mode and this is the boundary between the two where the current is still continuous, but it exactly begins from 0 and at T s it exactly reaches 0. So, this is called as the boundary condition. And how this happens? This happens because this average I L which is equal to I O. Now, as we change this load, as we change this load changes, I O changes, this resistance changes, this uh, I O may decrease. So, here if you see that this uh, I O or I L this is going to be lesser than when it is in CCM and similarly here it is going to be further reduced this I L. Okay. Then as our I O decreases the converter goes from CCM to DCM. Now, what is the role of this uh, boundary condition? Let us uh, look into some of the equations related to boundary conditions. For that uh, let me draw this gate pulse G. And then this is the inductor current. So, at boundary it will be like this and the voltage across the inductor V L
So, this is V in minus V O and this is equal to minus V O. So, at boundary if we take the find out the average this is T s into I L B and what is this I L B? I L B is this average current boundary current I L B. So, if we equate the averages that means T s into I L B. So, this is T s this T s into I L B we will be equal to the area under this triangle. So, T s into I L B equal to half of delta I L into T s and what is delta I L? Delta I L is this. Now, note that that this is only at boundary we can write it otherwise you cannot write it. So, then from this what we get is I L B equal to delta I L by 2 which is equal to V in minus V O by 2 L D T S. So, from here what we see is that I L B equal to V in 1 minus D into D T S if we want to get rid of V O this by 2 L. Now, this is also called as L critical we will denote it by L critical the L that is associated with boundary condition. And this is this L critical is important because when we decide that at a certain particular value of I O we want the boundary condition then for that particular value of I O you can calculate the value of L and we denote that as L critical. If the inductance goes below that then what will happen is that the at the same current converter will go into uh, DCM which is not uh, what we want ok. So, obtain L critical using this equation. So, then what we see is that this boundary condition it depends on the duty ratio, it depends on the value of L and it also depends on the switching frequency or the switching time period. If we change any one of these then the boundary condition will change and then accordingly the L critical value you should change for uh, to obtain the boundary at a particular value of load current alright. So, from here what, what is the uh, the importance of uh, this uh, boundary uh, why we did this boundary condition. So, what happens is that when the converter is in CCM or it is in boundary at that time this output to input voltage relationship remains V O as equal to D V in. And here in this case uh, this load current we do not need to know this the ratio is independent of the value of load current. Whereas, when the converter goes into DCM at that time what happens is that this V O by V in this becomes a function of your duty ratio as well as the load current and of course, other parameters. Okay. So, then that means what the control does not remain simple the control becomes more complicated in DCM. So, we want simple control and so we want the converter to operate in CCM and in uh, or up to boundary. So, that is why boundary condition has to be specified for most of the load range for which your buck converter is going to operate you would want 
it to be in CCM and so that is why your inductance value has to be greater than the L critical that you obtain from um, your um, expressions for boundary condition that we just derived now. So, L has to be greater than L critical that is how we will be choosing it. And further you should also note down that we had obtained this expression for delta i l as well. Now, we can put a limit on this delta i l. In certain applications, we will we may not want the inductor current ripple to be very high, we may want it to be small enough. So, using that expression also you can obtain another value of l. So, let us call that as uh, l ripple. So, your L whatever you choose that should be also greater than L ripple. So, this is how you choose your value of inductance. Now, there is uh, no specific answer that this is going to the value L, it is a choice depending on many things your uh, how big inductor you want to design or how small inductor you want to design because the size of the inductor also matters. So, uh, and the cost of the inductor all that is a factor. So, but, uh, but theoretically uh, it has to be greater than this L critical and also it should be greater than the L ripple. So, the key points of this lecture is what that we can choose the value of C depending on the voltage ripple expression or the current ripple expressions. And second you can choose L using boundary conditions and the limits on the inductor current ripples for DC to DC converters. Thank you.